All right, well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Stick around and find out. See, that's an exciting theme, isn't it? An exciting musical theme, and yet, if I were to sit down and watch an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation today, I would probably be bored out of my mind, I'm sad to say. And there's a parallel there to the subject of this video. Hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions, here with my uncut review of Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. Uh, now, if you've seen my review of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, you know that I did not like it, I didn't find it funny. Man, I was wrong, though, in my review. I said, oh, this movie is not going to be like a, like a big uh, deal. It's not going gonna, gonna to be easily forgotten by people. It's not going to define what Marvel movies are going forward, blah, blah, blah. I was way wrong. People got so hyped, and they loved Guardians of the Galaxy. And you might have noticed that since then, you know, I don't really make predictions in reviews. I even shy away from making recommendations in reviews. I just talk about my reactions to things and let you just uh, pull from that whatever the crap you want. Uh, so I'm not, it's not my intent to poop on anybody's parade. If you like the original Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't think less of you. I don't think your tastes are somehow less refined than mine. We are just different in that way. Uh, so don't let me poop on your parade. Um, let's rip this bandit off as quickly as we can. Uh, okay, so the synopsis from IMDb reads, Set to the backdrop of awesome mixtape number two, Guardians, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 continues the team's adventures as they unravel the mystery of Peter Quill's true parentage. There you go. Um, for my tastes, the jokes uh, were too wordy or, or, or overwritten for my taste. They just take them verbally a little, t you know, one step too far. I just wanted it to be more concise and punchy um, and unexpected. That's the problem. You know, I could see either the punchline coming or the fact that a joke or a punchline was coming from what felt like miles away. And so without that kind of like bit of surprise, I, I kind of need that. I, if I see a punchline coming, I, I don't I don't find it funny, you know, it needs to be unexpected, it needs to be surprising and shocking and weird or off, you know, or something off kilter or whatever. Uh, otherwise, it, I, I'm really not going to find it funny most of the time. Um, there was some more character focus, which is always something that's really important to me, uh, much more so than story, but barely so was there more character focus in this movie. Still, there were some extremely rare, uh, moving and or funny uh, moments for me in this movie, which was nice, but they still were surrounded by what felt like just this endless, endless monotony. Um, the cast, they all did a fine job. Uh, the performances were all fine. It was great to have Kurt Russell in the movie. I'm a Kurt Russell fan, and all of his scenes, I felt like he brought his, just kind of his everyman quality to it that, uh, and it that elevated the quality of those scenes, even as it grounded them in what felt like something that was more natural and human. Um, so I really appreciated uh, his involvement in the movie. The character Mantis had a really interesting accent. Uh, I don't know if it was a uh, an accent I ju I'm just not familiar with, or if it was a fictionalized mashup of different accents, but it had this really kind of, to my ear, odd, unusual sound to it that fit well with kind of her character, which was an odd kind of character. And so she was an interesting one to watch. All of the dialogue delivery in this movie was, even in the grounded moments, just slightly over the top, slightly exaggerated, just slightly unreal um, and overdone. And I think that's probably to keep this kind of lightness of the tone that is a defining part of the Marvel movies these days. Uh, as far as stunts and visuals, lots of CG eye candy didn't look realistic, but it's not supposed to look realistic in a movie like this. You know, it's just tons and tons of spectacle in terms of sets and costumes and CG and you got plenty of that in spades. Uh, as far as, you know, is there anything of worthwhile philosophical, moral, or spiritual significance in this movie that might stimulate worthwhile thought or conversation? I don't know, guys. I was so bored. Absolutely nothing came to mind. Absolutely nothing comes to mind. I just could not wait to get out of the theater. Uh, so in summary, my thoughts on the first movie really can still be applied to this movie because the tone is the same. So much of it is the same. So if you liked that experience, my guess is that you'll like this experience. If you didn't like that experience, my guess is you won't like this experience. Um, there were, though, some brief, very rare exceptions of actual laughter coming out of me and actual emotional investment. Um, but they were just like flashes in the pan and then they were gone. Uh, so insanely bored throughout the entire time in the theater. Um, okay, so that's all I really want to say, but to uh, fill up 
the rest of the time, I'd like to do a little bit of performance art and try to simulate for you what it felt like for me to have to sit through this movie in order to complete this review. Um, I'm going to, for two minutes, uh, try and simulate that. And uh, you're welcome to skip ahead if you would like. Uh, we're going to start that two minutes right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, that's Ben Browder. Oh, cool. I'm glad they gave him a part. Doesn't really play to his strengths. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Oh, there's Kurt Russell. Oh, a moment of emotional investment. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Oh, I'm actually, I'm laughing at that joke. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. Okay, and we're done. All right, so in summary, if I were a time traveler, I would go back in time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Peter. <laughs> You're going to have to see this movie because it's the big hotness and it would be weird to not have some kind of content about it on the channel and the podcast. So you're going to have to see it. But if you can somehow plan ahead maybe and see if someone else that likes this series a little bit more would want to review this one. See if you could make that happen. I don't know. If you could get out of this somehow, see if you can make that happen. Um, it's rated PG-13 for sequences of sci-fi action and violence, language, and brief suggestive content. All right, those are my thoughts. I'd love to get yours. Are you a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy? And, like, if so, celebrate that, please, in the comments. And uh, let me know what you really dig about uh, the, the first movie or about this movie, if you've seen this one also. Um, let's see here. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe if you like this video and want to share it with other people and want more videos like it. That's how you make that happen. Uh, visit spiritblade.com to find out how you can support this channel and to check out the weekly podcast, the audio dramas that we that we have for you there. Uh, if you visit our About page, you can get information about how to support this channel and also get some exclusive content. Uh, and also, there's a ton more content and community over at boomchristiangeekcentral.com, so I hope you'll join us there soon as we continue to geek out and seek the truth.